Hi sugar boogers, what's poppin'? My name is Rabbit and welcome to episode number 38 of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1. Okay friends, so I decided actually not to warp out and go back. Instead, I backtracked a little bit and tried to look around just so that I could hopefully jog my memory and remember the layout of this dungeon a little bit better than I did in our last episode as we were starting to make our way through. I still don't 100% know exactly where every room is and exactly where we need to go, but I do think we're okay for now. So the point being, I decided not to go back to town. I'm not gonna be a, a sissy yet. I want us to try to explore a little bit and we really aren't having to use our charges that much because as I sort of showcased and explained in our previous episode, we have quite a few weapons now that bring with them some magic charges that we can continue to utilize over and over and over again and it doesn't deplete any charges for us to tap into those. So I'm gonna run around this first floor when we first approach, well I shouldn't say approach, when we first access is the word I'm looking for. The sunken shrine here. We want to make sure we're getting everything that's in this room because as you guys did see in our last episode, there are just so many extraordinary and remarkable treasures here that even if our team can't use all of them, we can still sell them and we are going to want to have that gold for later on. So I think either way you slice it, it's going to behoove us to take a little bit of time to wander around here. And like I had noted in our previous episode, I will try <laughs> to be mindful and cut out a bunch of the repeat and duplicate fights. Now, not all of them. There will be some points where we're so close to our objective, I'm just gonna leave them in, but we'll try to cut out most of the duplicates. Anyway, Burl gained a level, 36 HP, some agility, some endurance, and it looks like that's it. What I am kind of happy to share with you guys is that our party got a lot of levels in our last episode. Everyone, I think, is one level greater than they were at the start of our last episode, which is always a good thing, especially here in the Sunken Shrine, which I guess I've not technically given you guys a proper recap. I apologize for that. In our previous episode, we had wrapped up the events of the Waterfall Cavern. We went back to Onlac to sleep, save, sell some excess stuff we had, and replenish some supplies. Then we ended up wandering to a side of town. We found a mermaid who, or person, we're assuming it's a mermaid because everyone keeps talking about legs and having them. And I'm guessing that's something that would be very special to a mermaid, right? And we also know that there are mermaids that used to guide, guard the shrine and served as some sort of guide for patrons visiting the shrine. So anyway, we saw the spirit of what we can assume to be a mermaid that pleaded with us to come and save the other mermaids. So that is why we are here in this, the sunken shrine. I don't know why that's such a hard word for me to say or title for me to say, sunken shrine. I keep wanting to say shunken shrine. Don't know why, not a word, not an expression, not any, anything you would ever say. But anyway, outside of that recap, we really have not been doing anything too spectacular. We're just continuing to walk around, wander, pick up some freebies that have wonderful spell effects that we're able to utilize, especially the AoEs are going to be nice as we're continuing to encounter enemies that just wanna come in huge droves and huge groups. So we'll hang on to that. Let's see what is in this chest. Ah, 9,900 gil, not the best pickup to be honest with you guys. I love the gil, but I'd rather farm for it at this point than find it in treasure chests. It just feels a little, a little uncool, but that's okay. We'll throw out that bolt to effect. We've got a whole lot of effects that we can just continuously use, which is why I decided not to go back to on lack to sleep. But on a personal note, what I was sharing with you guys is that in addition to all the madness going on in my life with moving to a new home, dealing with whack jobs that want to follow me for an hour around town as I'm minding my own business, you know, all of that good stuff, I do have an opportunity to, fingers crossed, hopefully soon, work from home. I am in the process of applying internally at my agency for one of two or three grant funded positions for a drug abuse slash substance abuse an alcohol counseling position. So that would be really wonderful to be able to transition. Did I? 
Okay, I did. I was going to say, did I already look into this? You guys, I'm losing my mind. And I really shouldn't be. It's not like I've had a bad morning or anything. I've actually had a pretty good day to be 100% transparent with you all. But to finish my thought, that would be so wonderful. I was talking to you guys about how for the longest time I've wanted to really reduce my hours at work and not even the hours that I'm putting in on the job itself, but the hours that I'm putting in in terms of the commute as it stood for a long time, not just here, but for the last several years, I have had to commute like 45 minutes to a site or I've had jobs where I'm doing like intensive in home or a whole lot of community based public health based initiative. So I'm constantly traveling for public speaking events, for continuing education opportunities, uh, panels that I'm a part of, conferences that I'm presenting research at, or I need to go for trainings, re you know, related to work that I'm doing for my agency. I've just had to do a lot of training and quite a bit of travel for the last several years. So this would be a wonderful opportunity to just get to work from home. My hours would be a little wild. I will not lie. I'm not remarkably thrilled about the hours that would come with the position, but it's really not the end of the world. For this position, because it would be a part of like a medication assisted treatment program, they would want us, I don't know if this is going to do anything, but we'll try it anyway. They would want us to work from like 5 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 12.30 p.m we would get a lunch so I guess it'd be up to you if you wanted to skip lunch and clock out at 12 or take a lunch somewhere in there like a nice half hour and then clock out at 12 30 either way I would basically be on the clock from like 5 a.m. to noonish, which would be great in a lot of ways don't have to use your PLT or PTO for any doctor's appointments you still have the whole day to do any errands you want to do to go see friends to work around the house you're not really a slave to that eight to five four or nine to five clock that I think a lot of us kind of do have to juggle and deal with, which is not bad. I've done it for years now, you know, but it sucks working the same business hours as the post office or as doctor's offices or anything else that you need to do. They're on the same timetable as you are. And it's just frustrating to have to use your hour lunch to run somewhere across you know, town to try to mail something or see your doctor or get your teeth cleaned or whatever it is that you're trying to do. And I don't know about you guys, I hate using my paid leave for doctor's appointments. It just drives me absolutely insane. So I always try to schedule those things during my lunches. So the point being, it would be wonderful to work a 5 a.m. to noon-ish schedule because I don't have to use any of my leave for any of those sorts of visits. That's something that even if I'm done at 12.30 or even if, let's say, I'm still wrapping up my clinical notes, I'd be done by 1. So I can do anything I need to from 1 to, let's use the muddle, from 1 to 5 or 1 to 4, you know, for some agencies that maybe close a little bit earlier. So I'm excited about the opportunity. I had kind of talked to you guys in our last episode that I'm not 100% sure if it is a a slam dunk deal, but I'm in the process of applying for it and I've already spoken with some of the directors and they know that I'm interested in transitioning into a telehealth role and a remote slash virtual counseling role. I love public health. I love community-based counseling and crisis intervention and intensive in-home. Done it for so long. It's it's so exceedingly rewarding to be able to make a difference on people's terms. But I'm kind of reaching a point in my life with all of these transitions occurring, even with Andrew and having my own home and not being sure what's going to happen with my personal relationship. I'm going to want a little bit more time for me. I want to move to a place where I can focus on self-care and that state of self-prioritization of my needs and my goals. And that's not a luxury that I've had because I've moved every two to three years for my husband's work and for the things that he wants to do. And I really, truly am ready to start doing things for me. As selfish as that may sound, I want to be able to do the things I want to do. If I feel like going paddle boarding on a Wednesday at 3 p.m., I want to be able to suit up my dogs and go paddle boarding. I don't want to have to 
worry about taking time off from work that I might need for medical appointments or whatever. I just, I'm ready to really focus on me. Or if I want to take a two hour bubble bath at 12 o'clock, I will have that opportunity. I will have, I will have that as an option, whereas it's not really been an option before. So we'll see what happens, you guys. I don't know, but one thing that I do know for sure is that it would be extraordinary even for the channel for me to have that because I could work my five to, let's just say with notes, I'm done at one. So I work my five to one, I can immediately start recording and I feel like that will help with the consistency that I've lacked for a little while since being done with graduate school years ago because ever since then, I've really been 100% like neck and wrist deep in all kinds of work and all kinds of projects. You know, I had a position where I was in a director's level and overseeing a full department. I had to deal with staffing issues and it was just, it was a lot for me. 2000 Gil, I ran all the way over here for Gil. This game is wildin'. That is all I have to say. So we spent all this time on this floor for nothing. I will go ahead and start cutting out repeat fights because I'm sure you guys are like, okay, Rabbit, you said you were gonna cut out the fights and then you've not. You've just been talking about how you might be able to transition to a telehealth role and a remote counseling position. But I'm excited about it and I hope you guys are too because what that means is that I can get more content out to you guys more consistently and I can tackle quite a few games that are on my backlog. So I wanna knock this out. Uh, and by this, I mean Final Fantasy one on the PlayStation 1 via the lens of Final Fantasy Origins. I want to knock out Luffy on the Fortress of Doom, and then I have so many games that I want to play for you guys. I don't know if I'll ever really fully throw myself into face cam series or streaming. That's really not me, but there are a lot of things that I do want to do for you guys. So I am excited and I am hopeful about the future because I think there are a lot of great things to come. I am excited anyway, and I hope some of you share my enthusiasm, mostly for the channel because I just, I love creating content for YouTube, but it's just been very difficult to do, and where does this take me? I don't know if I really want to go down here. You know what we're going to do? Give me a second. I'm going to run back to those stairs that took us to what? It was floor four, I think is what we explored in our last episode, but we checked all those rooms and I feel confident that we picked up everything that was on that floor. So I'm going to cut all the footage and bring you guys back with me when we're at this. There was a staircase, I think. It was in the lower right hand corner, I want to say, I think, of floor four. Well, I'll bring you guys back when I find the stairs in there or if I find a room that has a treasure chest we didn't access. But I just don't want you to see a million kajillion fights and I've already not edited out enough footage. So this is my gift to you. Give me just a second and I will meet you on the fourth floor where we technically had left off in our previous episode. Uno momento. Alrighty tighty friends, welcome back. So I've exhausted the process of running back through the fourth floor. I looked in all of the rooms that were here. Whew, spared you guys a lot of fights, but I wanted to just be 100% thorough, or I should say 99% thorough because there's still a chance I missed something but I don't think so. I believe we got all of the chests that were on this floor but before I forget I want to show you where we're at in terms of our stats because Tyrone got a level I think without you guys. I want to say he's the only one but just in case he wasn't here's Rohit's page. He will be accessing level 33 pretty soon. Burl no, Burl got a level, I think, without you. Or did you guys see him get a level? I honestly can't remember. Here are his stats now, regardless of whether you were able to witness the change in real time or not. I want to say you did, but I don't know for sure. Melvin will very soon be hitting level 33, so I guess it doesn't matter that I'm showing you this. And Tyrone, for sure, ended up uh, reaching level 33 without you guys in tow. So I wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to take a gander at his stat page. And what I really need to do, I used up all my cure ones on Rohit because he is just taking a little bit of a beating. The enemies here are not his biggest fan, but that's okay. They're just jealous of the hat, and that has always been the case. Rohit does not care. He is just going to adjust it, and we're going to move forward onto the fifth floor. Now, here on the fifth floor, I don't really know. I 
Oh, I get, I see there's a mermaid person. Do you guys see that in the lower right hand side? I have to remember how the heck we access everyone. Uh, but let's just start with grabbing the treasure chest. I guess that's the most obvious thing that we need to really be doing. So let's grab our 9,000 gill. We've got 1,760 and then a diamond armlet, which is quite nice. We'll go ahead and sort while I'm thinking about it. And it says that it is a decorative armlet with a diamond inset. And it is appropriate for everyone in our party. So let's look at where everyone's at and just see. Who do we want to put this on? Honestly, I'm worried about Rohit. He is the one that just the enemies are not super fond of. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. Everyone else will be fine sporting that ruby armlet. And we'll just call it a call it a day. So let's start running around. And oh, there's a mermaid over here. What do you have to say? You must be the answer to my prayers. That's it? Well, little lady, if you want me to be, I'd be happy to answer any and all prayers you've got. If the light of the sea is lost, we mermaids will turn into bubbles and vanish. Oh goodness, that sounds just dreadful, doesn't it? Oh lord, well, we'll want to do our due diligence and save these fair maidens. One of my mermaid friends left for the land and she hasn't returned. I wonder what became of her. Maybe she grew legs? That might be the one that was quite joyful about the fact that she had legs. You humans can breathe here? Now that's a surprise. Well, we've got some oxy ale, if I do say so. Here's another chest with 2750 gill. Nothing too wonderful. Let's check this left side. This might be actually where we need to go, and it doesn't appear as though we have encounters over here. So I will run back to that other side. Oh. Or maybe it's fine. So we got a diamond helm. We got diamond gloves. And what is this? <gasps> the Rosetta Stone? I do believe there were a few people that were talking about this object. We need to immediately take a look at this. What was it? Someone said something about his brother wanting to find it? I don't know, but let's look. Diamond helm. Helmet made of diamond, which is only suitable for knights. That's okay, because we've got to sell the diamond armor as well. And then we have diamond gloves. Gloves made of diamond. Also only appropriate for a knight, which we don't have. And I should say, as an aside, I apologize if you hear any squeaking. Kajiro is going to town on one of his new squeaker toys. But, oh, 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 you know what that reminds me of? Okay, I need everyone's honest opinion. I have historically just bought toys for my pets. Uh, you humans can breathe. Okay, we talked to her. I decided to cave and try out Bark Box, and I know there are a whole bunch of those dog boxes that you can purchase. Please restore light to the crystal of water. It is the only way to save the seas. We'll do our best, ma'am. We'll do our best. And this has 4150 gill, and she says, the, that crystal, you must be the warriors of legend. Well, you yeah, know. I don't mean to brag, but yes, that is us. That is indeed us. Anyway, I know there are a whole bunch of those dog boxes out there, but I decided to go ahead and just try the Bark Box. I know there's Kong Box and Vet Pet, Pet Box, and all of them have great reviews, but Bark Box seems to be the most popular. Anyway, this lovely lady says, I wonder if we can regain the sea's light, or will we become bubbles and disappear? We're going to try to stop it. Woo! 10,000 gil! Holla and 10. We're not even going to acknowledge this. That is just to troll us and ruin our day. That's the only reason that's there. 5,000 gil. So I would be interested in hearing any of your experiences with BarkBox. This is the uppermost level of the shrine. Kraken, the water fiend, dwells on its lowest level. All right, so we got to find Kraken and kick his booty. The longer the water fiend remains, the weaker the sea's light becomes. Well, ladies, I told you I'll try to help you and get her done but no promises at all and this one says in the eastern continent's desert i saw someone enter the tower of mirage and oh that bell's wondrous sound oh gosh now musashi is losing his mind i'm sure you guys can hear that and here is an antidote which we will gladly grab let me run over here just so we make sure we don't miss any rooms and a diamond shield. It's always the good stuff that's kind of scattered in various rooms, so we need to be as thorough as we can. But sadly, this is again an item that is only able to be utilized by knights, which, 
you guys, we went mage heavy because we are tryhards, so there's nothing I can really do with that. And I just talked to you, right? Yes, the, the, the longer the water fiend remains, the more trillicious your existence. But okay, we got the Rosetta Stone, and that might honestly be all we can access on this floor. I'm just going to do one last loop-de-loop -loop and pull, pretending we're SpongeBob tying our shoes here. I think that's really everything that we can do here in the Water Shrine. Or I shouldn't say in the Water Shrine as a whole, but at least in this section of the Water Shrine. I was pretty transparent with you guys when we initially got here that there are different sections to the Water Shrine and you can kind of tackle it in whatever order you want to. I don't know why I'm looking in and out of the same rooms constantly. It's a part of my, I guess, uh, neurotic nature to make sure that I'm not missing anything and then I end up looking at the same thing 20 million times. Just bear with me. We'll be fine. It's not like we're in a rush. We're just the warriors of light. It's not like we're trying to save the world and like these fiends are slowly over time sapping the life out of all the inhabitants of this planet. No, no, uh, that's not an issue at all. Ah, cue the sarcasm, absolutely. Okay, my dogs are losing their minds. I think they're even like, okay, Rabbit, are you done looking in all these rooms? Because we're ready to move forward into what's next. And I think what I will do, because she's saying that about breathing underwater, I am going to actually warp out because we're going to go into a totally different section from where we were before. So we will go ahead and warp together I'm gonna check on my dogs just to make sure that they're not uh, destroying each other, which is not the case. I will actually tell you guys, Musashi loves Kajiro, and they are having an absolute blast together. So I'm so happy to have a new dog, but oh my goodness, having a puppy, you guys, oh, I forgot what a challenge it was to have a puppy again, because I've had Musashi now for two years, so it's crazy circling back and having to retrain a dog and you know not just retraining in terms of you know knowing sit stay leave it drop it all of those really important critical cues but also training for simple things like potty training Kajiro is pissed on my floor so much and I don't know if this is TMI but we're having a weird issue with coprophagia with him and I am not sure what the issue is I actually have a vet appointment just to make sure he's not deficient in anything and if that's the source of it it's probably attention seeking I don't know we're gonna figure it out I'm working through a few things with him but he is amazing and Musashi is having a blast so let me go ahead and sell the objects that we can't use which would include the diamond armor I'm sure you guys are like is Musashi actually okay because yes he is the one that is hollering they love bitey face I think it is the husky way uh, Huskies and these Belgian Shepherds, they really, really like to go hog wild on each other, which I guess works for me. As long as they're having a good time, I'm having a good time. So who am I to rain on their parade? But there goes all of the unnecessary excess. I probably should have sold those before saving, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway, my loves, when we come back together in episode number 39, we will be back, you know what, whatever, let's just go back together to the sunken shrine, and we have to go to the new section. I'll also make sure that we do take a look at the Rosetta Stone. Yes, let's ride that barrel. We'll take a look at the Rosetta Stone. I don't think I let you guys see the description for it. Side note, Rosetta Stone is also that language learning software. I don't know if any of you have ever tried that. So that's also on my to-do list. So I was talking to you guys about how I'm really excited about having the opportunity to record more as a result of working remote and providing telehealth counseling services. I think it would be amazing. Ride the barrel. What happens if I do ride the barrel? Does it take me back? Does it take me back? Maybe it does. Or does it take us, I think it does take us out. I just wanted to see, just for me. Let's just be sure. And is that what it's gonna do? 
I think it is just going to bring us back. So you don't have to warp out. I guess you can just run back to the barrel. And why it's calling it that instead of a submarine, I really, truly don't know. But okay, let me focus. I have like too many things going on in my mind right now, which is typically the rabbit way. So in addition to being very excited about being able to record more for you guys if I am selected for this position, I think it would be really nice to be able to focus on some additional language learning. I, I do speak more than one language, but I would like to learn a couple more or hone my language skills for some other uh, languages that I have not yet mastered. So that would be really nice. Okay, key item, the Rosetta Stone. Stone tablet etched with ancient inscriptions. So not a whole lot for us to work with here, but certainly something that we will be revisiting in the semi-near future. But until that point, friends, thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Rabbit. I feel like we, in this episode, were joined by Musashi, the Siberian Husky, and Kajiro, the Belgian Tavurin, both who are wildin' for some reason but that's okay. I appreciate you all very, very much, and I look forward to catching up with you here in just a moment in episode number 39 of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1. I'll see you guys in just a moment.